This is going to sound a little bit familiar in a bit, but I've got a good hook here. My story is about a teacher playing a Simpsons game. Okay, is it Simpsons Sim- Hit and Run? Hit and Run, yeah, I was going to say that. No, no, but it does involve weaponry. Just Simpsons like Hit, hit and Run? Hit and Run, well... You... Just hit, just hit, you don't run. <laughs> There's no hitting. <laughs> There's no running. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> I'll explain. So as I said, the story is about a science teacher playing a Simpsons game. So uh, there was a science teacher who had been blind for 16 years, um, and she's now able to see letters and discern some ed- the sort of edges of objects. She's able to see some stuff, mm. right? Um, and basically, this all, this, this all came about because of uh, a, a group of sort of researchers trying to work um, on a way to restore um, sight to people who, um, who sort of like uh, <clears throat> optic nerve has been damaged. So the, the connection between their eyes and their brain has been damaged. Um, and what they did is essentially um, collaborate together, um, Americans and Spanish scientists, um, and just completely said, right, let's get rid of the eyes in this situation. Not working, don't need them. Got a camera, hooked it up to a pair of glasses, and then hooked that up to an electrode, which they implanted in her brain, which stimulated the part of her brain that sees and essentially, she's now able to discern letters and some objects and things. And basically, so I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit more in depth in this. So as I said, she'd been blind for more than 16 years. Uh, they drilled a hole in her skull, which was about, I think, uh, 1.5 um, centimeters. Yeah, but 1.5 mm. ce- centimeters um, sort of uh, wide. Pretty standard yeah. size for these things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, they, so they dr- <laughs> just fully drilled a hole in her skull that size um, and then implanted um, a microarray, which we've spoken about, uh, spoken about before. It's basically just a lot of sort of little um, electrodes. They just pop it in there. Um, I think they're... Um, oh, how, many, how many electrodes are there? I can't see it here. 96. It holds about 96 electrodes. But um, previous studies have found that um, 700 uh, could be enough to give a blind person enough to be sort of increase their sight to a useful amount. Out of interest, do you know how that works? Does each electrode, say, correspond to a pixel? or I, I don't know specifically mm. how it how it works in that sense. I mean, I, I think thinking about it in terms of cameras and pixels isn't necessarily, necessarily the best. Well, just because it is reading from an electronic sensor, so yeah, yeah, that I, does have pixels. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like, I, I don't know how. I don't know the best. I don't know the best way to describe it. I don't actually know exactly how they translate the visual information into the um, electrodes. Yeah, but it would obviously be in a way that your brain understands, and I don't. Well, maybe not because the brain. I think the oh yeah, the, like, brain, the brain, does, brain can the brain just, adapt can just adapt to, to other yeah, forms I suppose. of data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I wondered if like the, if the brain can figure out like, well, when I do this thing, mm. this signal changes in this way then it can build up a model of how that works. You might be right, and I'll tell you why. So, like I said, she was playing a Simpsons game. Do you know why she might have been playing a Simpsons game? Or what What? What I mean when I say she was playing a Sim- Simpsons game? Is it like uh, a multiple choice game? Right. It's kind of, yeah, actually, yeah, it actually is. So what they did um, to test her uh, ability to do this, uh, or to see, they set her up in front of a computer, and <laughs> they made a game that involved Maggie Simpson. Now, Maggie Simpson would be holding a gun, in right, classic for she classic for the character. <laughs> yes, she did. Show, she did shoot Mr. Burns. <laughs> sorry, spoilers for a <gasps> I'm so twenty sorry. T- what twenty five year old <laughs> twenty five year old episode of The Simpsons. Yeah, <laughs> oh, nearly, someone I'm might just, not have got right. <laughs> just catching up, Corey. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Season seven, bro. Season seven, episode one. Should have seen it. Um, no, okay. Before anyone says. It's the last episode of season six. Who shot Mr. Burns? Part two is first episode of season seven. But they had a picture of Maggie Simpson, Maggie Simpson, um, with a gun in one of her hands, and she basically had to choose whether it was the left hand or the right hand. Out of interest, when this person is, uh, for all intents and purposes, blind, mm. why is it relevant that it's Maggie Simpson? Why not just is the square on the left or the right? It's Maggie Simpson. I don't know. No, no, it's, <laughs> that's not enough reason. <laughs> I I found this and I thought that is hilarious. Have other calls on their time, and so having to like get a picture of Maggie Simpson and then put the gun in her hand and all that kind of stuff. Luke, a picture of Maggie Simpson with a gun in her hand is probably one of the first things that will come up when you search Maggie Simpson on Google. Uh, Oh, she's she's well known for holding guns. Yeah, right. I understand that. It's It's just flipping an image essentially. But why Maggie Simpson? (laughs) They probably thought it was funny. Okay, right. It's Scienti- also good for branding when they then send it to the news. And oh, absolutely, go, yeah. Scientists solved blindness with pictures of Maggie Simpson holding a gun. Okay, <laughs> of course they did. And we're now talking about it and probably wouldn't be if it wasn't for the Maggie Simpson spin. I can honestly say I would not have been no. talking about this if it wasn't for the Maggie Simpson spin. 
<laughs> hey, bravo scientists. That is exactly why it's Maggie Simpson. We have answered my question. Maggie Simpson helped cure blindness. No. <laughs> that is the title, no. if this makes it to a clip. Only she's if... achieved so much as a baby. <laughs> Only she's if... She's been a baby for 30 years. I think she's... Yeah, she's still a baby, though. She can't think very well. <laughs> if the news coverage gets this more funding... Yes, Maggie Simpson helped cure blindness. Other than that, Maggie Simpson has not yet helped cure blindness. In this one person? To no. An <laughs> well, I, I would argue that Maggie Simpson was um, not consequential to the testing of this equipment. <laughs> I, I would wholly disagree. No, um, also, I should say, not cured blindness, but help treat someone who has um, an issue with their eyes causing, um, causing blindness. There you go. Just Specificity. Just, just fixing my words. So, as I said, they put, um, they put um, a microelectrode array with 96 electrodes into her visual cortex, the visual part of her brain. Um, and... Uh, she had been uh, she'd been completely blind, like I said, for quite a while, and they had it in there for six months. Um, and they tested her on this, essentially, like I said, the Maggie Simpson test, where is she holding the gun in the right hand or in the left hand? Um, and through through sort of testing and feedback, they were able to get it to the point where she could see letters on a screen, which is uh, well, she could see letters, which is like in which is like incredible. Like yeah. if you think going from complete mind blindness to being able to s see letters, that's that's a pretty that, yeah. that uh, in your sort of ease of um, accessing the world, it, accessing an inaccessible world, that is going to make things a lot easier, right? Out of interest, do you know whether she was like so? Like, uh, it, it, does she just have this kind of like weird inkling that the gun is in the left hand or in the right hand, or is she seeing some form of very hazy visual image? I don't, I don't actually have any quotes from her specifically, but what I do know is that she actually is a co-author on this paper because she was giving really specific feedback, like sort of clinical feedback, having mm. been a science teacher. So I don't know how, like, how she experiences the site. It wasn't like, it wasn't yeah. anything that I found, but um, I, I know that she's able to, to the, to the point where she's able to just sort of even discern letters. You know what I mean, so it would be more than sort of just a hazy feeling because letters are more complex than is it the left or right? You know? Of course, mm -hmm. I just mean, all I mean is like, so like, Presumably, when she first was hooked up to this thing, mm -hmm. she probably was like, no idea. Mm -hmm. And then, so when you're doing like basically feedback, so like there's a there's a a, a technology called biofeedback where you basically like train your brain, mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily know how you're doing it, but um, if you have uh, information and you try a bunch of stuff, eventually you build up a model of what you're meant to be doing, right? I don't know if that completely makes sense, but um, it's a difficult thing to explain. But so like she could just be like. So, so when they say you got that right or you didn't get that right, that's basically updating her model. And I wonder whether she sees this as an image or if she just sort of feels, gets like a sense of like, I think it might be the letter R. Um, I'm going to say R and she's right. And it's like, how did I know that? Don't know. But I did. I'm not sure. I don't know. But the thing is, I mean, she had she had sight before because she's so she's she was 57. She'd been mm. blind for 16 years, which means she'd had at least partial sight for most of her life. Mm. So I, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. Is six months? Do you think six months would be enough time to build up that sort of? Um, I don't know. No that idea. sort of like just through trial and error, you know. Well, we learn to t talk fairly quickly as children, but it depends on how rapidly our brain is able to restructure exactly, itself yeah. at that age. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't know. I don't know. Again, like this is I, I've like I've I've sort of read the paper on this. It's I'm I'm not totally sure mm. um, on the answer to that, but um, essentially the idea of this is to give um, some blind people basically more mobility um on their own mm. so um you know like obviously blind people are capable of getting around the world but the world's a bit inaccessible sometimes and this is a way of saying okay well if you use this you can read potentially read signs you can um sort of recognize doorways more easily yeah. um you could see sort of ge generally sort of see where people are things like that um and uh yeah so it, yeah i think like Basing it on what I've got here, actually, look, I think that um, I I think that like it's I think it is that sort of trial and error. It's it's it basically the game was to train her on how to interpret the the input. Right. Yeah. So that sounds like she is seeing some form yeah. of input, but she doesn't necessarily. It's not like necessarily how we would imagine sight to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that's because I think the way that I think that the difficulty of that is that we have a very weird concept of how sight is because we're basically tuned into it all the time yeah. you know what i mean whereas like if you think about a baby 
a baby is is getting is getting the same visual information as us, but has no way of processing it, right? Mm. So it it probably it probably isn't too dissimilar. It's just that she's she doesn't have the, the it's it's basically like a new set of eyes. She doesn't know how to process that information yet. Do you know what I mean? Well, yes and no, but the brain is set up to process. It, like you're born with a brain that is set up to then eventually, like process information from the eyes that you have oh absolutely Whereas yeah we're processing information from like a random computer we don't we have not evolved to yeah work yeah with. Abs- yeah no, absolutely <laughs> but i mean yeah I, it's i think it's a, it's a difficult thing but ultimately the conclusion here is that um this this technology could um like through literally just drilling a hole in your skull putting in a little electrode um could help you be more sort of capable of sort of seeing things for yourself mm. although there are some issues um she couldn't tell the difference between some letters she couldn't she found it hard to tell the difference between i l c v and o oh i l i and l makes sense yeah mm. c and v i guess it's rotated it's almost like a rotated oh i mean yeah. as it's the, the, the it's not oh yeah. i can't she can't tell the difference between i and l and C and I know, v. I know, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just um, mean those are those yeah. are different. Those are difficult letters to um, discern. That's really interesting because I, like, for example, I to O, you'd think that's quite a clear distinction, mm. but then O to C, absolutely, like, really similar. Mm. Um, that's really interesting. Yeah, but I mean, actually, this is. I, I was thinking about this, and when I take off my glasses and I'm in my um, and I'm doing my eye test, there are some letters that I'm just like, this is. I don't know what this letter is. I know mm. that it's like a lot of letters look incredibly similar. B's and D's. Can't tell the difference between some of them. C's, O's, mm. Q's, um, any kind of roundedish letter, mm. really difficult to tell. U and V. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, U and V are actually really easy to tell apart. Are they? Super easy to tell apart. V is V is like U is rounded. Yeah. V totally isn't. So when it's like like my because my eyes are really bad. Like when you're kind of squinting, U and V don't look the same when you squint because mm. they Cause they one spiky. One spiky. Yeah. And they they fill different space. Yeah. U right? is closer to O than it is to V. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. But then because O is totally round and U has got the straight, they mm. fill again. Letters fill different space. This is really weird stuff that I've never actually spoken about with anyone yeah. or vocalized. <laughs> but it's about it's not about like how you write them. Yeah. It's about the space that they, they fill, fill on the page. Yeah. And if they fill similar space, they're like they're difficult to tell apart. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And like and so if you're looking at a line of letters. Um, an L and an I would usually be, depending on the font, would usually be not too difficult to tell apart. An L and an I. Because an L sit because with an L you can see that there's more space between that letter and the next letter. An I sits closer. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's it's different. Wow. Yeah. That's super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Go for an eye test. It's uh, a lot. It's, it's a lot you of fun. For an eye test. <laughs> I did. My yeah, eyes got worse. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. it happens. Uh, so that is uh, my story. So. As I said, um, you know, uh, they've basically created these glasses that can help uh, people to uh, help blind people to see a little bit better by putting a little electrode in their brain, um, and they're going to continue a sort of clinical style, uh, cl- a clinical style, a clinical trial. <laughs> um, they're going to, they're basically going to uh, sort of start and continue a clinical trial um, throughout, um, basically through to May 2024. Um, that's that's related to this study, but it isn't the same study specifically. But they've mm. got a clinical trial based on this technology running through mm. to May twenty twenty four. So if we're just still doing this in May twenty twenty four, maybe we'll maybe we'll do a little episode on it. I wonder how long before Disney sues them for using Maggie Simpson's image. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Get a different already, gun wheel. Probably already baby. started. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, and as I said. Um, uh, she was uh, she was uh, named a co-author on the study because Maggie Simpson. No, <laughs> no. she should have been. No, she held them at gunpoint. And no, <laughs> put my name on there. No, no, no. the The teacher was the teacher was made um, uh, a sort of co-author on the study because she had a huge input on it herself, um, being able to give very good information and feedback, which well I think done. is really cool. That well done really for her. Cool. Very good. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah, happy ending. Yeah, very happy ending. <laughs> If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs> <laughs>